Hey everyone, Alex here from warnoffkeys.com and in this Discord JS tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can make messages automatically update with a counter similar to what you see right here. This is within the Warn Off Keys Discord server and this is a leaderboard for whoever has been thanked the most amount of times and this updates every 60 seconds. So the counter will update every 5 seconds, but it will actually fetch data from the database every 60 seconds. And just so you know, this video will assume that you already have a feature that you want to incorporate this functionality with. I'm not going to be building the entire Thanks system from scratch. However, I do have a video on most of the functionality for the Thanks system, and a link to that will be in the description or on the top right of your screen right now. With that said, we can go into VS Code. I'm going into my Features folder, my Sub-Features folder, and keep in mind that the project setup I've been using throughout this series will automatically import and use these functions within this folder. So if you do not have the same project setup that I do, then you have to make sure that you import that either manually or through some other method and actually run the function. I'm going to make a new file. This is going to be called countdown.js. Within here, we're going to export a function. So module.exports, the really one parameter, which is the client. And within this function, we're going to hold all the functionality that we need. So again, this does assume that you already have a feature that you want to implement this with. And so how you're going to gain access to that message is going to be completely dependent on your own use case. For demonstration purposes, I'm just going to simply gain access to a general channel within my test server and then send a message there that will then automatically update. So the first step is to gain access to the guild. So I can say const guild equals client.guilds.cache.first. This is going to return the first guild that your bot is in. And so if your bot is in multiple guilds, this won't really make sense to do. Because my tutorial bot is only in one guild, this makes sense for my use case. And at this stage, we can now gain access to the channel. So I can say const channel equals guild.channel.cache.get. We then have to pass in a string, which is going to be the channel ID. So if we go into Discord, we can right click on general, click on copy. We can then paste that in. Now that we have access to that, we do want access to the message. We can then send a message, and this is going to require an asynchronous function. So with that said, we do have to use await which means that our main function we're working in needs to be asynchronous as well. So I can add in the async keyword there. I can then say const message equals await channel.send. And what we're going to send to this channel is going to be the result of another function, which we have not written yet. But just go ahead and type in get text as a function and call it. We can then go to the top of the file. We can make this function const get text. This is simply just going to return a template literal and inside of here is where you're going to want to insert in any of the text that you want for your message. For example, if we go back to the worn off keys discord server, this is going to be the entire text here. And this also means that this is going to be a formatted string based off of the information I got from my database. Now you might be getting stuff from a database, you might be loading it from a file, you might be doing something that makes sense to add in a delay where you don't want to be updating it 24 seven all the time. So once this updating in 40 seconds, once this counter hits zero, it's then going to fetch information from the database and then update this message. However, the counter is updated every five seconds, but the database call is only executed once every minute. So of course, what you're going to be fetching is going to be completely dependent on your use case and to make sure this is going to be as helpful as possible for as many people, I'm going to provide a very generic example. We can go back into VS Code and above the get text, I'm going to create a variable using let because we're going to be changing this variable. I'm going to call this important data. This is going to be a string. And then within the return template literal, we can then insert in important data. And then afterwards, I'm going to add in a couple new lines with forward slash n. And then I'm going to say updating in. And then we want to insert in another variable, which we have not created yet. So going back to the top of the file, we're going to want to create two variables. One is going to be the starting counter, which is going to be 60 seconds, which is going to be similar to what we have here in worn off keys. And then the other one is going to be the actual counter, which is going to then be the changing thing. So const starting counter equals 60. This is constant for a reason. This is never going to change. We can then use let because this is going to be a variable that will change counter equals starting counter. So we're going to immediately start off with a 60 second delay. Now, whenever we're entering this data here, we can then say updating in counter s. The s is going to represent seconds. So for example, if it was 30, it would say 30 S, which is going to represent 30 seconds. We could then add on three dots. And now at this stage, if I were to save this, we can then go back into our test server and it says updating in 60 seconds. However, this doesn't actually do anything. It's never going to change. We have to write that functionality. I'm going to create another function. This will be called const update 
counter. And this function is going to essentially repeatedly call itself every five seconds. So because the five seconds might change in the future for your use case, we're going to put that inside of a variable. I can then say const seconds equals five. And then down here in the update counter, we're wanting to make sure that we call this function again. So it will be a recursive function. I can say set timeout because we're wanting to call this every five seconds and not all the time. We can then pass in the name of the function and then we can pass in how many milliseconds we want to wait before we call this. So I can pass in 1000, which is how many milliseconds there are in a single second times seconds. Now at this point, this function will be ran every five seconds. However, it's never ran immediately. We want to make sure we do that within our main function. We can do that by simply just calling it, so update counter, but how does it know about the actual message? So we can use that as a parameter here. We can pass in message, and then right here, we also need this to be said message. And this is going to give us access to the message so we can then edit it. Of course, in your own use case, this might be completely different, but I'm assuming because you wrote that functionality, you know how to access the message you're looking to update. So now within update counter, so the first thing we want to do here is subtract the number of seconds, which we defined on line one from the actual counter variable. After that, we want to see if the counter variable is then less than or equal to zero. If it is the case, we then want to reset the counter variable back to our starting counter. And so we can do this really simply with counter minus equals seconds. And then if counter is less than or equal to zero, we could then say counter equals starting counter. But we're never actually updating the message that's passed in using the get text function. So at the very start of this, we can call message.edit and we can pass in the result of the get text function by calling it. At this stage, let's go ahead and save this and see what happens. So going to Discord, it sent another message here. And then after five seconds, we actually get an error. That's simply because my update counter should not be called like this. This is assuming no parameters. And one of the easier or cleaner solutions to this is going to be creating an inline function here, which would then call update counter and pass in the message. We can then save this. It'll restart the bot. Going back into Discord JS, it's then going to say updating in 60 seconds. And then it should update right there to 55 seconds. And I'm going to let this run until it hits zero, and then we'll see it actually reset back to 60. So now it's at five seconds, and then it should go down to zero, which means it will automatically go back up to 60 seconds, as you see right there. However, it's just saying updating in 60 seconds, where whenever we're saying get text, we're actually using this important data right here, but that's always an empty string. And this variable is going to hold any important information that you want to display within your own use case. In my use case for worn off keys, that would be this entire message right here. That would include all of the formatted names of whoever has the most thanks and how many thanks they have. So of course, that'll be different depending on your use case. And so you'd want to format the message however you see fit. But I will provide an example of how you're going to actually update this information once every 60 seconds. So going back into VS Code, we're wanting to create another function called fetch data. This would typically be an asynchronous function because we're going to assume you're fetching something from a database or from a file. And within here, you're going to then actually do that. You would connect to your Mongo database and actually fetch something from your collection. You connect to your MySQL database, whatever you have. However, in this example, I'm just going to say important data equals hello world. And we're wanting to call this at two different places. Once, whenever the bot initially starts up, we can say await fetch data. That way, whenever it sends the message initially, if it doesn't exist, then it's going to make sure that it has the proper information. The other time is whenever we're actually resetting the counter, because again, the message updates every five seconds, but the actual data is fetched once every 60 seconds. So we can then say await fetch data. And because we're using await here, we need to make sure that this function is going to be asynchronous. So I can then save this, the bot will restart. We can go back into my testing server and it's gonna say hello world updating in 60 seconds. That counter will then decrease and once it hits zero, it will then fetch information, which in this case is just reassigning a string. However, in your use case, of course, you would connect your database as I previously mentioned. And so this is going to be how you update a message every five seconds or however many seconds you want. And then once that counter reaches zero, it's going to be how you can actually fetch information, which in this case is just updating the string. Thanks for watching this Discord JS tutorial. If you want to learn more about Discord JS, consider clicking on the playlist you see on your screen now. If you need help, feel free to leave a comment or ask in the Warnoff Keys Discord, which can be found in the video description.